Dear viewers, our topic today is evolution of drama. Drama is a composition in verse or prose intended to portray life or character or to tell a story. It usually involves conflicts and emotions through action and dialogue and is typically designed for theatrical performance. In this lecture, we shall discuss the transitional phase of English drama before its culmination in Elizabethan drama. This transitional phase, which overlaps the Middle Ages, is not so impressive in itself, yet it significantly contributed to the subsequent development in dramatic art. The genesis of medieval drama lies in tropes or dramatic representations related to the liturgy. The liturgy is the customary public worship performed by a religious group. Later, the trope became elaborate and grew into the liturgical drama. The liturgical drama enacted stories from the Bible. Originally, it was written in Latin, but gradually, vernacular elements manifested themselves. The elaboration of the plays made it difficult to confine the performance to the choir. So, the performance was extended down the nave or the central part of a church. Finally, it moved out of the church altogether. Once outside the church, the vernacular took the place of Latin and the story moved away from the liturgy to make free use of the whole range of sacred history. The liturgical drama thus gave way to plays in English completely divorced from the liturgy, though still religious in subject matter. These plays are known as miracle plays. The themes of liturgical drama were extended to develop the cycle of the miracle plays. These themes include the creation, the fall and doomsday, etc. The establishment of the Feast of Corpus Christi provided a suitable day for these plays. The term Corpus Christi, literally meaning the body of Christ, is related to Eucharist or the Christian ceremony commemorating the Last Supper, in which bread and wine are consecrated and consumed. It is a processional observance involving performances at different stations. Pageants or wagon stages were used for these performances. Each wagon stage represented a different scene of the cycle. As the trade guilds took over the sponsorship of miracle plays, each guild was responsible for a wagon with its scene. Almost complete cycles of the miracle plays survive from Chester, York and Wakefield. Two plays from the Coventry cycle survive and we have also a Noah play from Newcastle, a play on the creation of Eve and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden from Norwich and an Abraham and Isaac play. There is also a cycle of 42 plays generally known as Ludus Coventry. A large number of cycles of miracle plays were produced by the trade guilds of the different towns of England. The Chester cycle contains 25 miracle plays. It begins with the fall of Lucifer and ends with Doomsday. These plays are marked by some realistic touches. With regard to characterization, Noah's wife, Balaam's as, and the midwives at the nativity are important. The York plays were probably written later. 48 survived out of the original cycle of 54. Four groups have been distinguished within the cycle. 18 of these are fairly simple and didactic in tone. A second group is marked by alliterative revival. This group includes the fall of Lucifer, the death of Christ, the death of the Virgin, the resurrection, and others. A little later than these, an anonymous author produced a passion play and depicted all the important events, including the conspiracy of Judas, the agony in the garden, the betrayal and the condemnation poignantly. The Wakefield cycle deals with unusual themes. Some plays of the cycle are comic and ironic. 
unlike other medical plays among these plays are in noah and two shepherd plays the story of noah is treated as a broad realistic comedy noah's wife is portrayed as a talkative shrew who refuses to enter the ark the shepherd plays are marked by the realistic painting of the lives of the poor the anonymous author of the five outstanding wakefield plays is the first english writer of realistic comedy his main inspiration was the realistic fable and his own observation rather than the bible or literary fable is related to the middle class which destroyed feudalism the middle class consisted of traders and artisans they dismissed the tradition of courtly love and its code of honor as impracticable ideals as they were down to earth they were concerned with practical things it implies a realistic approach was beginning to develop in english society and english literary tradition let us return to the miracle plays the two surviving coventry plays are fragments of a new testament cycle the new castle noah is not as impressive as the wakefield or the york noahs are while miracle plays but enjoying popularity drama of another type emerged it is called morality play and it is a precursor of elizabethan drama it does not deal with biblical stories but with personifications of virtues and vices which vied with each other in order to claim man's soul so morality plays focused on the psychomachia or conflict of the soul it was a characteristic of medieval allegory and from allegory it passed into drama in the middle ages people had an allegorical bent of mind they tried to understand things from religious or moral point of view so themes related to seven deadly sins and divine mercy were popular in the middle ages as regards seven deadly sins they are major offenses from religious point of view the first prototype of morality plays is a paternoster play which was written in 14th century in 15th century morality plays reached their zenith these plays were artistic representations of the medieval motif of ubisant which means the transitory nature of youth life and beauty The Pride of Life is the earliest extant morality play. It is the story of King Rex Vivus who boasts of his power and freedom of action. A bishop reproves him, but the king dismisses him and tries to defy death with the help of mirth. At the end, death claims the king and his soul goes to the devil to be redeemed finally by the prayers of Our Lady. The Castle of Perseverance is a 15th century morality play and the earliest known full-length vernacular play in existence. It shows the progression of mankind from birth to death, illustrating his temptations and the process necessary for Christian salvation. The play pictures men in this world as besieged on all sides by sin with the only comfort and salvation coming from virtues wisdom also known as mind will and understanding is one of the earliest surviving medieval morality plays together with mankind and the castle of perseverance it forms a collection of early english moralities called the marco plays in the play wisdom the five wits together with mind will and understanding are overcome by evil after further developments they are brought to repentance by wisdom the regeneration of anima concludes the play the play is characterized by the mingling of coarse comic elements with a serious morality mankind is a moral allegory but mankind is about mankind a representative 
of the human race and follows his fall into sin and his repentance. Its author is unknown. Every man is the most appealing of surviving 15th century morality plays. Here the action is developed with a simple dignity and the personified abstractions play their part with forceful dramatic logic. Every man is summoned by death to a long journey from which there is no return. Good deeds is willing to act as guide and companion, but every man's sins have rendered her too weak to stand. Knowledge leads every man to confession, and after he has done penance, good deeds grows strong enough to accompany him. When every man is about to die, all the companions except good deeds decline to go with him. Every man enters the grave with good deeds. An angel announces the entry of every man's soul into the heavenly sphere and a doctor concludes by pointing the moral. To conclude, we can say that the medieval liturgical drama, which started from the trope, gradually modulated into the miracle play, which drew its inspiration from the biblical themes. At its heyday, the miracle drama was paralleled by the morality play, which was about salvation. Thank you very much.